We're about to have a big changing of the guard in Washington at the Federal Reserve, Jill, which is another reason we wanted to talk to you. Uh, is there going to be a significant change, do you think, with, with this switch? I don't think so. I think Ben Bernanke, who left as chairman of the Federal Reserve yesterday, handing over the reins to Janet Yellen today. They are like intellectual partners. They were working together. She was the vice chair under Bernanke since 2010. She helped craft the policies that are in place. And to some extent, it's almost like Bernanke version 2.0. And she's going to be very, very focused on employment in the United United States and what policies the Fed is going to actually keep keep in place to foster employment and also has to really be careful about inflation because some of these policies could create inflation down the line. And a lot of the opinion pieces written yesterday about this, the words I kept seeing were delayed consequences. What is she inheriting? What was his legacy? Well, you know, part of Ben Bernanke's legacy is really split. And we don't know what the legacy is going to be until the next few years unravels. But the number one thing that people have accused him of was he took these em emergency measures, buying bonds, expanding the Fed balance sheet to $4 trillion. And yes, we understand it was because it was an emergency. But down the line, people are very concerned that inflation will pop up and that a lot of markets are going to be dislocated, not unlike what we've seen in the last week in some of the emerging markets. So Janet Yellen's real critical issue is, how do I unwind these policies without disrupting the world markets? And how do I unwind these policies and not plunge the United States back into a recession? Meanwhile, Joe, we saw this week a, a quite a strong fourth quarter growth number, GDP number, about 3.2 percent. At the same time, the market's been very uneasy the last couple of weeks. What's going on, do you think? Well, I always like to say the stock market is not the economy, right? The stock market is a vote on what investors believe companies are going to earn in the future. What we know is the first half of the year, very slow growth. And we know that happened because of two factors, interest rate, I'm sorry, uh, tax Taxes went up, as well as government spending was curtailed. So a weak first half. The second half was very strong, and it looks strong coming into this year. That said, stocks were up 30 percent last year, right. people. Come on. So 4 percent, 4 or 5 percent drop in January. No freaking out, please. This is not a panic mode. Corrections are 10 percent. We're long overdue for a correction. Yeah, and I'm are. not a prognosticator, as Anthony knows. Um, I'm always wrong about that. But what I can tell you is it will drop. I just don't know when. Right. That means keep that diversified portfolio. Don't sell out just because you're scared. And be very clear about when you need your money. All right. We haven't had a correction since 2000. 11, you're right. So we're all going to relax, Jill. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, take Lessinger, a chill, Thanks Bill. so much. Thank you.